Okay. All right. I'm redoing this video because the last one, like, made a second video that was only two minutes long. I was like, no, not doing it. Yes. So, I have a haul. It's boring. That's not that boring. I got some of the, like, basics that I needed specifically, really, for um, vintage paper crafting, junk journaling, whatever you want to call it, art journaling. Um, anyway, I got, I want to show you what I got. I have um, another idea for junk journal, and I also have, I want to show you kind of what I have as far as vintage books, children's books, how I'm using them, and one other thing I might show you. You might be interested, you might not. So, haul. First, the most boring. <clears throat> okay. I spent, originally it was supposed to be $41.09 tax, shipping, and everything. But, one item wasn't there, which was only $3.50. But anyway, my total ended up being $37.14 for everything. I'll show you as we go. I got two packs of cream cardstock. One is an eight and a half by 11 pad. And then one is this, is this a pad as well? It is a pad as well. And I don't know why it's in this. I'm taking it out because it's loud. Jesus, it came like that. I knew that would happen. Come on, Healy. Are we there yet? It's throwing off my white balance too, isn't it? It's already a day, isn't it? Okay, so I got those two paper pads of cream paper to print my images on because I don't want to use stark white images um, to print, you know, like vintage ephemera on essentially is my reasoning. Let's see if I can fix that tilt. Is that better at all? I don't know. So yeah, I got cream. It's technically ivory. It was on sale. The 12 by 12 was $3.84 for 40 sheets. The eight and a half by 11, you know, letter size was 50 sheets and it was $4.19. And I was like, that's weird because since the eight and a half by 11 is smaller, only 10 sheets less, Seems like about the same amount of paper. Wonder if it even showed the weight on it. <clears throat> Let's see. No, it doesn't. But yeah. So that is how much those were for printing paper and stamping on paper. And I may need a big one. So I got the big one too. I also got a pack of craft paper. This is from the Park Lane Papery, 50 sheets. This was $3.49, and again, 8.5 by 11. The next thing I got of paper, this is Strathmore, which is a great brand, especially for like watercolor paper and tracing paper but it's usually kind of expensive, so getting it on sale is really a must. And also, um, if you're if getting their watercolor paper, which is awesome, I would only use that for, um, you know, really wet mediums, watercolor and acrylic paint, save it for that. Because anyway, I got a pack of tracing paper, 40 sheets of it. It was $3.49. Um, I got, I wanted it, you know, a nice quality heavyweight tracing paper. I have some cheapy stuff, um, but yeah. I thought that was a pretty good deal. 40 sheets for a good brand. Then I got some gesso. I have never worked with gesso. I don't know if I'm going to hate it. I'm going to love it. Um, you can, there's also recipes online to make it yourself, but I wanted to try it 
this is a four ounce thing. Some people will be, may be like, oh, I'll use that in a week. But this was $2.79 on sale. Not bad. Then I wanted some cheesecloth. I used to use gauze. Um, my fiance, when we first got together, within the first month or two, he had to have surgery. And um, we had those, it looks like a band-aid packet, but you open it up and it's like sheets of gauze. And I had some of those, but I wanted to get I had used some of those before. I wanted to get cheesecloth. So I just searched cheesecloth on Joann's and this popped up. I was like, what the heck? And I had put in lowest to highest price. And it is the exact same size. I looked as far as how, how many feet, how wide it was than the cheesecloth they were selling. And that was $7.00. Even with a 40% off, it was more than this, which was only $2.25. And this one is already nice and like a creamy beige. The other um, cloth, cheesecloth, was stark white. So, I mean, now I don't have the option of the white, but I'm happy with this. I really like the material. I like the look of it. And the color is really great. $2.25. Then I got a pack of the Tim Holtz Ideology Tiny Attacher refills. There's 1,550 per box. Maybe I didn't even need a refill yet, but now I have it. And those were $3.14. Then, all the rest of this is Tim Holtz and I didn't even know. This, which I just thought was Sizzix, is a embossing folder. I thought this would be great for any kind of crafting. You want to do vintagey, shabby chic, regular, you know, bright and fun. It's roses. Um, you can ink it up or just use it for the feel, for the paper. It's a great image. This was $3.49. Then I got these, which are round pins. They're just safety pins with a loop at the bottom instead of a spiral like normal safety pins. And I do have a few of these, but I believe the ones I got were actually salvaged from like tags and um, clothing. This comes with 24 in three different colors. They're all antiqued of like um, antiqued copper, silver, and gold. So yeah, I got those. Those were $2.79. And the last thing I got is this pack of ephemera. It's Tim Holtz. Now, if you are looking to have some unique stuff and make, you know, different things, don't go buy Tim Holtz ephemera because, you know, everyone has this. But this is a 111 pack and it was, did show a lot of labels. Hold on. Anyway, it had a lot of like labels and tickets and not a ton of, because if you get like the pictures everyone's going to have the same thing. And it didn't have a ton of those, but I did not realize how absolutely small some of these are. Let me show you. Look at that. Look at that. That is like a quarter of an inch long. And I mean, that's probably why there's 111 pieces in this and like 50 in some of the others. But I mean, I, I knew they were going to be smaller Dang, some of them are like minuscule. Like there was two things in that lot. So that is everything I got for $37.14. That's with tax and shipping. I think I got a pretty good deal. Um, the thing that they ran out of after I ordered was Emporium. The Tim Holtz Ideology Ephemera Pack Emporium. So, which after I looked at it online, I wasn't like super in love with it after someone like fully went through each piece. So I'm fine that I didn't get it. And yeah, I wanted to show you a few things um, that I've been working on and um, ideas. First, I'll show you an idea that I've had for a while. I got it from on Pinterest. Someone had taken a hardcover book, took all the pages out, lined it with fabric, and um, made fabric pockets for like pins and little art supplies and then put handles on the book um, 
So it was like a to-go art supply thing. And I was like, that would be awesome with junk journals. And I was like, you could make that with brown paper sacks. I've been into brown paper lately and I will show you something after this too. So <clears throat> Brahms, I think, I know it's not just an Oklahoma thing, but it's a Southern thing. Um, this is not their normal sized bag. It's a smaller bag. Um, it is about two thirds the size of a regular grocery sack, but I saved these and these are perfect, would be perfect to cut right here. And then I want to make like maybe a fabric binding or something and, you know, maybe reinforce it with something a little bit thicker so that it opens and closes. And I would sew <clears throat> this shut to the fabric binding and then have another one on this side with the handles. And I thought that would be really cool. And obviously this whole bottom chunk would be gone. It would just be the top half. You could reinforce all the edges, the straps, and make a really cool junk journal. But I also thought, well, you could like make that yourself with some really heavy paper, back it with chipboard, and um, use some different ropes or twine or make your own handle with like a mixture of ribbons. I thought that would be really cool. And a basic, you could use these just simple basic brown paper sacks. You can get these as well as the more narrow ones if you wanted to try it on a small scale, you can get all of these at Dollar Tree for a dollar. So I thought that was a cool idea. I wanted to share it. I had saved those um, smaller bags since the holidays and last, <laughs> last summer. So it's been a while. But after I'm done making this video, I'm going to be get my sewing done. As I said before, I have a two sew pouch as well as other things I have that are not in the pouch that I need to get sewed on my sewing machine. It's right here. Um, so you do have to reach across it, but whatever. One other thing I wanted to show you, this isn't a new thing. People have been doing it forever and a day, but save your prescription bags. Um, I open up the staples. Like if it was stapled right here, I open each side and then take out the staple so it's not too messed up. If you ripped it out, you could just cover it with something, or if you want it shorter, if you want this to be a page vertically, you could just cut it off right here. The reason I like the length is because you can put it this way in a signature of a book and open up both sides, and it's long enough because you need length this way if um, it's going to be pages within a signature in a book that's, you know, got some size on it. That, and then let's do the brown paper. So, there is obviously he pretty heavyweight brown paper in um, paper sacks from the grocery store. This is a standard size paper sack from Reesers. I undid the bottom. Look how, I mean, this is heavyweight paper. And then I have... this super light paper. I saved this before from an Amazon package and um, I put it in between a book to flatten it, but I folded it in half. So obviously it just made a crease there, but these are perforated like every, what is this about 10 inches? Yeah, there's perforations, but this is really thin. It's a nice texture. This is the paper that I used to make my paper bags, my little tiny sacks that I'm going to be sewing today. I There's also, when I got my Joann's order, I got, between the two boxes, I got four or five sheets of this. And this is only half of one sheet. But it's in between. It's still real pliable, but it's a little bit heavier and um, nicer packaging. And this is more like postal paper. The Amazon one feels more like, um, like a butcher paper, a thinner. 
one. And I have a roll of craft paper somewhere. And I was looking because I have rolls of like uh, wrapping paper right over there. And I didn't see it. I'm going to look further. But right now I have plenty of craft paper without that roll. But anyway, there's different weights of craft paper depending on what your usage is. Um, but always save if you've got some nice, you know, un, just torn up and shredded <clears throat> craft paper. It's great, great, great in junk journals. Um, the really light stuff from the Amazon package is really great to crinkle up and make the faux leather like I did on my gratitude journal. I just didn't ink mine up. But all I did, it was wrinkled up and I used um, Mod Podge, just some watered down um Elmer's PVA glue to stick it on. So that's all the brown paper. What did I say? Oh, well, those were my ideas. I'll show you those later. I want to show you what I do with books, like vintage books, and kind of what I look for and what I would use to take apart versus just, um, you know, photocopy, etc. Let me show you. All right. Now these books were shared with me and I split them with my friend Carrie. So some of them were her books and she just gave me a chunk out of them. Some of them she had given me most of the book, taken a chunk out of, etc. All of these book pages you've seen me use that I printed on are from an old cheesy Nora Roberts, um, what do they call these? It's obviously a chapter, but romance novels. One man's art, the art of love. Real cheesy, but when it comes to just standard, your native language, book page, background, you don't need 10 freaking books, you know, to tear out of. If it's just simple, your native language, if you speak English, you know, regular and English book pages, you know, maybe if you needed a bigger size, I understand that, but you don't need to destroy a ton of books <clears throat> to do that. Um, this was shared with me and I think this is the funniest thing ever. So, um, this is like a religious line of books, you know, like there's golden books and da da da. This is called Alice in Bible Land, and I just thought that was so funny, but it's not that old. It's actually, well, I guess that's kind of old. It's copyright 1989. It's when I was born, so getting up there. Um, some of these are not, like, I would maybe just cut the little girl out of those. <clears throat> these are cute, and I will show you what I did cut out on two pages <clears throat> so I cut out some focal points I wanted this for the edge of a page there's these two columns <clears throat> and I cut around I left the border in um, of course and I cut this little girl out with the sheep let me grab that. All right. So <clears throat> there were some focal points and then I just saved, I think, some of the scraps of borders for like layering pieces <clears throat> or just little, you know, little images to add in there. This is like a little fence. I don't, I think that was while I was cutting it out, the scrap I need to throw away. And then I had her little feet somewhere. That was like the back of the page. And then my friend also gave me <clears throat> half of an old Reader's Digest. And what I did was I put all the pages back in order because there was like just chunks and pieces everywhere. And then 
I, after putting it in order, I took out all the pictures and put the pictures in group by story because a lot of the photos are themed. Like this one has a lot of like medical stuff in it. Um, this one has a lot of um, like boy scouting kind of stuff in it. So I saved those and I, let's see, this needs to be, da, 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 da. this, like I said, was given to me. I cut out some of these images like this that I really liked. I did not write those on there. This dude has knuckle tats. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. So those are the things that I have already cut out. Then, oi. I don't want to go through every piece because it'll take forever, but some of them are really like interesting images and like kind of odd like there's these kids looking at this graffiti of a hanging man like what is that there's always that's the author of the story which I kept with each story that connects he's looking down at an old car she is pissed she's got her gun this is cute but he looks terrified he looks grumpy as heck and this kid is irritated. I love this picture. That is so cute. Again, she looks not like a pleasant person. And he's throwing a brush at a guy that looks like is stealing a little girl. What the heck? It's an old barge. And again, knuckle tap man. He's like <laughs> doing huntery stuff. <laughs> and look how pretty that picture is. Someone's doing a Ouija board where your problem is and he's fearfully looking out a window so yeah there are those let me show you these really quick I guess not a stranger a lot of these are medically medical related I love that so I don't really know specifically like what like, if I would just use this as just a regular, you know, cool vintage picture. I like the little doctor's kit. And, um, like, that's just a cool picture. I don't know. These are, like, Boy Scout related. And, again, like, I don't know that I would, you know, make a Boy Scout. <laughs> hickory, hickory, hickory. Boy Scout Americy. What? <laughs> That looks terrifying. I love this picture. He's fixing a kitty's leg. Watching. Well, he's not watching TV because it probably wasn't TV. Looks like some sort of politician and the author. So, those are the stories that I got out of this book. And I've kept them. Um, like I said, I put, I took the pictures out, but kept them in groupings. And this is all of the pages I have minus what I already cut out of Alice in Bible land. I don't know why I think that's so funny. Just that they thought of that title. I want to do an Alice in Wonderland journal. Now, like I said, you don't need a bajillion, you know, things or books from your native language to tear apart. In saying that, I found an Alice in Wonderland book in Russian. Now this is a remake. It does have, that looks like mold to me. This is a 1993 remake of a book from 1979, I believe. Look at these pictures. Yeah, it's a 1979 remake. So it's not like a crazy old book I would be destroying. But, like, what if this is really special and cool and valuable? I don't know. And this, when it comes in, you can photocopy an image. And 
I kind of just want to use, you know, use the pages because they're in another language and Russian obviously uses a lot of different lettering. Look, drink me. I love this book. There's where she meets all the people after she's cried. Okay, I'm not going to go through all this, but. Oh, there's her little dreams. I got this in the children's section. All the children's books are a quarter. The adult books are 50 cents. Now, let me show you children's books. They're a different story, in my opinion. Again, all of this is my opinion. There's no rule. There's no law. When you buy something, it's yours. You do with it what you want to do. Um, I have taken apart one book, this one, and I am going to sew some pockets out of it. All of these I pulled out because they were the pictures were half sheet and the other side didn't have a picture so I didn't have to like choose which photo I wanted I just need to try and find a way to kind of clean these off I mean without I don't know because this looks kind of funky and this one was gotten to by freaking Daniel okay I'll show you in this book first because these were from the same person I'll just read you what I wrote after finding all this in these books it says Daniel and maybe Ellen or Ethan crossed out Shauna's name and then wrote all over the books. So like Daniel got a book and then like crossed out the people that had it before Linda Grant and drew all over it. And then there is like, let me show you this. There's feet and stars punched out of it. Looks like the same Daniel decided to destroy this one, too. And then this was already coming apart, almost totally debound, and it was two signatures. So the two signatures, I just um, used my tiny scissors, cut them, and took the, the threading out. I think the second signature is pretty much still together. Um, maybe, I guess it just didn't have any of those one-sided half pictures. Who knows? So yeah, <clears throat> my idea with children's books is if it is already destroyed, if it's not, you know, destroyed and a hundred years old, then, you know, that's where I give myself the okay to cut in it. Someone else might think that's totally wrong. You should never cut a book no matter what. And some people are like, you you're going overboard. Please put your opinion below. I want to know what other people think about it. This one again is coming apart and there is a lot of stuff in the book. It's torn, yada yada. This one again, this has a lot of water damage. I love the library cards. The whole thing has water damage. I love the coloring in this <clears throat> or the color palette. And this is the last small one, Magic Secrets, which I think is so cool. It is a book about showing kids how to do like magic tricks. And the images are really cool. I'm thinking what I may try is do a test sheet and like spritz them with alcohol, which will make them more wrinkly and kind of sanitize them. I don't know. The last two I have are Disney books and I do want to make, um, a Disney book, but not like a Mickey mouse. That's just not my thing. Um, freaking Daniel got to this one too. Let's see. Is this the one? He didn't really mess this one up too bad. He just drew in it. But I love, love, love these front and back pages. He ripped this one out. There's really pretty imagery. And this, you could just, you know, photocopy and shrink these down. Because a lot of these are really big. 
I, this is perfect. Like, I love that image. Again, this was Shauna's, and then Daniel got it. Maybe he was a little brother. I don't know. This, how old is this book? Again, I don't know. So, 1986. That was Thumper, and then this is Goofy's Big Race. Frickin' Daniel. This, the front one is pretty intact, but the back one, he had crossed every single one out. And I was like, maybe if I try to erase it, because it was pencil, but if I pressed too hard, it was just taking up the pigment. Wasn't happening. So, this has some really cool images. A lot of Donald Duck. I don't know. I kind of like it. But these are also books that are really destroyed. And those are all of the books that I bought that were destroyed, destroyed. And then I have some others that <clears throat> I'm probably going to make copies out of. Let me know what you think. Those are all... Let's see how, how long we've been doing this. Doesn't say. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Let me know your opinion on the book things. And... um. Let me know what you think about my haul, about the brown paper sacks, and everything else. I will talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.